Hello, this is Datton of the Center, and I'm reading from the Datton Risk. And uh, this is the in um, in uh, May of 2022, Datton Risk, um, meaning all of the risks, all of the break, all of the rule breaks associated with Datton Risk, ended. So I graduated from Datton Risk to Datton of the Center. Today I sealed the death of Datton Risk, meaning that all of the things in the sketchbook labeled with do not read until after death in online can now be read. And that is um, essentially what I've done with death. Um, so let's see. Um, so with that out of the way, let's read the next chapter in the Datton Risk or the next two chapters, um, fifth and sixth grade. Okay, so let's see. New Denton? Denton 2, no, Denton, no, Chrono Sketch. First box. 10 to 12. And let's just read these. Now these books were actually kind of um were actually um kind of mutilated. Um the the fifth and sixth grade books somehow ended up in the crawl space for a long period of time. They got water damage, and only a few pages were saved. However, if I go straight into seventh grade through tenth grade, this is going to show to be way too much so i will so i'll just read these and i tried that earlier actually i tried doing some of the sixth grade through 10th grade and and it just by the time seventh grade rolled around it is just too much um so that's um so this drawing is um is themed on my grandmother's death in 2006 um she died of cancer that was the first human that I knew personally, whoever died, um, the night that she, the night she died, it was the, my mom had gone to New York to, um, to see her in her last days. And it was the middle of, it was like the middle of the night, maybe like 3 a.m. And I uh, saw this uh, spirit come to me. It was shaped like a, uh, it was shaped like a floating head with a tail behind it, which I had actually gotten the image of from Scooby Doo Two, which I had seen because of, I I'd seen Scooby Doo Two because Halloween had just happened and it was it was uh, November twenty eighth two thousand six, so I um so um. I um, saw this spirit and the spirit told me that that um, she was wrong about the afterlife. There is an afterlife, her being an atheist. And if you can't go, if you can't upload to, or if you're not, if you're not a believer in a specific religion, or if you're not a believer in any religion, you can't go to the heaven for that religion, but you can still go downloaded into you can still download into the um, mind of or sorry, you can still download into the mind of one specific person who loves you in your life and she wanted to download into my mind and i said well how do i know that you're actually nene and not some and not some demon trying to defraud me somehow and she said um there's no way you could tell that but i but if if I if you don't tell me or if you don't take me in, then I'm going to go I'm going to have to go all the way back up to New York and or then I'm going to have to go all the way back up to New York and then I could completely dissipate by then. And but I made I made her do that. And and uh, later I had this idea to take the. um to make a drawing 
um, of me writing my school papers with the ghost of Nene over me um, at my desk and and have like a painting of that. So this is me practicing drawing myself holding a pencil. I should be able, you should, This I think this is supposed to be rotated. Yeah, there's me holding a pencil. I was I was copying the hand holding a pencil and I was um, because I was, you know, this is going to be part of the. This is going to be part of the. Um, this was going to be part of the um, painting of me drawing in a note or drawing in a notebook while Nene's spirit was over me. And then this is also a remnant of um the i forgot i i don't have any records of the name of this device but it's called the c flyer um you can see where the bat you can see where the headlight is hooked up to uh the battery and the camera is hooked up to the battery um and this is a um this is a device that could fly through the air and then dive into the water it was a remote control toy. It could fly through the air and dive into the water. And the idea was to take pictures of fish um, inside of a lake uh, and, and even like, and, you know, find uh, and fly through the air with, you know, it had a, it had a camera and it. it was like a drone, but it was, it was organized like a regular plane. It wasn't a helicopter. These are, you see, here's a better drawing of the hand holding the pencil, and here's the paper that I would be writing in the painting, exploring exponents. Um, and um, in sixth grade, I was learning exponents, apparently. Um, then you have these drawings. I, I, I've... These show up in this sketchbook a lot. These show these drawings of um of old ladies show up in my sketchbook a lot. I think this is how I chose to represent my grandma, even though that's not how I saw her spirit. And she's this um this old lady with big hair sticking out and a mask. And um and a small simply drawn body this is a bunch of those types of this is a bunch of those types of um drawings working out um or there's a bunch of those um, those drawings interacting with each other they've got um, different body shapes um a little bit of fat phobia going on here it's a this one's saying boys, this one's saying you'll get used to it. And this one says, you'll cave you're caving in the floor. And this one's like, I know. And then because she's caving in the floor, this one who's being crushed is saying, prop up the ceiling. And this one's like, what? Because she's muffled by the ceiling. And then these um Looks like it says deep quiet, but that should probably say keep quiet. So this one's going keep quiet, you know. Same drawing again. This is a um. This is a bunch of um. This is a drawing that is not electrical in nature. It's even though it's hard to tell what it is. There's a flower. There are birds. There are fish. You can't really see. This is a drawing that I made for art class, where we are supposed to draw. We're supposed to draw um, something with uh, white cray paws or white pastels on a black background. This is fifth grade. Did I say sixth grade earlier? This is fifth grade. This is one of the most important drawings of of fifth grade. Um, I made a um, I had four alter egos that I that I agreed on 
probably with my parents or probably with my mom because she's a psychologist. And I said, the, um, uh, and I imagine that these characters were playing with me on the playground in at the, um, at the, I imagine that these characters were playing with me on the playground at Spencer's farm where I went to after school and um, they were dip the, the giddiness, the giddy child personality jailbird. The personality was while I was having a meltdown genius. Um, the personality that did all the, um, that did all of the, um, uh, electronic sketches apparently and dipster who was a hypothetical fourth personality assigned to college dipster was supposed to be like a cool self um i said this character would appear in college um mainly to um you see as i as i understood these later in 2015 it was on a graph of um of happiness versus um energy dipster or dip is high happiness high energy jailbird is high energy low happiness or is low happiness high energy genius is high energy neutral happiness high energy neutral happiness and genius is low energy high happiness apparently because this is this is the fabled thing that you know only adults have and that that did appear in college but wasn't so cool um now when these when these um personalities appeared on the playground they were outside of myself and i just sort of imagined they got hit by a car and then poofed out of existence and that was the end of them. I don't know what this is. I think, I don't know what that is. And that's the last photo of fifth grade. And um, sixth grade. Now this one was really destroyed because I think this was originally a lined paper book and all the pages were stuck together. And the and the cover was covered in mold. So um, I was in sixth grade. I was working on Mister Stupid, which was a comic book, um, basically in the vein of these egos. Um, you have Dip being represented by Mister Stupid as an evil cartoonist, and and um, Genius being being. Uh, being shown as this hyper intelligent alien who's incredibly cocky named um Daten Alpha Zanatari. And um she she is trying to prevent him from stealing all the intelligence from the people of Earth. And uh later I retconned this and said that it wasn't because she was that it was it wasn't just because she uh wanted to help the people of all planets reach intelligence is because earth is actually um earth is actually going to give rise to the people who recreate the universe and then create xanatar and and bring life to that planet so it 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 helps um produce the cycle of of um of intelligence into the next universe um this is a this is a goal I had for art class to create a ocarina shaped like Daten Alpha Zanatari's head. Here's the sea flyer again. As you can see, I incorporated transistors into the um into the design. Um I didn't know how to um I didn't know how to incorporate um I didn't know how to incorporate antenna. I didn't know how they would 
actually work. I think I have a better idea of that now, but I haven't really studied it specifically, just sort of inductance and and how it works. C flyer again. This is me trying to make a um, a marionette controlled by a hand puppet. So I was, so I drew um, designs to um, to Velcro um, the arms of the marionette around around the fingers of the hand, and yeah, they um, just because I was so good with hand puppets, and I thought. I needed marionette. And I thought, you know, I want this to look more realistic, so I'll take a marionette. Uh, this is me talking about different graphic systems. I have Flash, Game Boy, and GameCube. Um, the Flash. So the difference between Flash, Game Boy, and GameCube seems to be that Flash are 2D and move in two dimensions. Game Boy characters are 2D but move in three dimensions, and GameCube characters are 3D fully. This is um, me writing a bunch of um, a bunch of names, and I just sort of defined. As you see, here's the first sign of Uggins. Uggins were created in in um, sixth grade as a um, as a method of trying to scare my parents away from going to the zoo. Uh, you see, I wanted to make, I wanted to buy the machine, or I wanted to buy the parts for a machine that I had designed, and um, my parents wanted to take me to the zoo instead. So I drew this. I drew this picture on a piece of paper and I and I wrote I am Uggin, care for me or I'll attack. I wrote one I drew it I drew it supposed to be like a tiny caveman. It's supposed to be kind of like a, a tiny caveman with a spear who's really dangerous and he wears a loincloth. I didn't really know what a loincloth looked like, so I drew a, a diaper made out of pine needles. Uh, I drew one nose, but it was too far to one side. And I drew another nose, but it was I drew another nose for the other nostril, but it was too far to the other side. And then I put two, or maybe it was a different distance from the other side. And, and then I put two more nose nostrils on it. And so it had four noses and that's how I, Uggins have four noses. I took it to my parents. They said, they said, um, or they didn't really, I mean, they weren't really afraid of it because my interpersonal skills were not good enough to realize that they were smarter than that. I mean, I would have, you know, I would have caved to the reality of some made up creature at that age. Um, even though, even if I knew I made it up, which I did. And um, so they took me to the zoo and while I was at, while I was in the car, I was using the Uggin as a toy, and I was describing the world of the Uggins and the Enos and the uh, and the forest of Malibu, and they and I I devised this world in so much detail that I decided I'm going to keep this and I'm going to keep making Uggins. So then you have, um, I think that's like a. I think those are dog tags. Um because we had because we had a dog, I don't know. Here I am working on logic gates. I'm not sure. Racing tracks. Here I am devising some of the comics. That will go in the comic book, Mr. Stupid says, what is that? It's my adjustable sunglasses. 
Cool. Yeah, isn't it? I can make it dark or light. I can turn it... Um, I don't know what it says. I can even turn it... Turn out the lights completely. Yeah, um, your bus just parked over there. Really? Well, I better go catch it then. He goes over and, and the guy turns his um, sunglasses all the way to black and he can't see at all. He gets hit by a car. Um, and then he flies over the uh, Monty Python and he flies over the Monty Python um, intro and they say, Monty Python. Say, wow, that was peculiar. Because, like, if if the Monty Python thing people think it's peculiar, then it really is. <laughs> I think this is a file hierarchy for a game. For a video game. This is the thing I wanted to create that day when I when I came when I started um, the Uggins. It's called mechanical state. You can't see most of it, but the idea is that instead of using transistors, because I didn't fully understand how transistors worked, and I knew that, I was going to make a robot that was operated or that was controlled by um, discs um, spinning around. Or actually, no, by um, just controlled by a needle spinning around a disc. on a motor and that mo and that needle directly um directly contacting with a um with a um piece of foil that you know is directly contacting with a piece of foil um that created another circuit And that that circuit would then, although I can see some, you can see some transistors in this too. So maybe that's not what this is. What the robot was supposed to do was scan across a surface. And I don't think this was actually it, but it, what it was supposed to do was scan across a surface and, um, and find um, paper clips that were on the ground and then uh, and then pull, pull them up and on a magnet and move them over to another part of the room or another part of the area accessible by the arm. I think this is a symbol for a turbine. As you can see, um, whereas previously I didn't know exactly what a transist are uh, as you can see um though previously i didn't know what an electrical transformer looked like and i just drew it as a um a step or a, a step going up or a step going down and there was um one line going in and one line going out now i was showing it to be um to be um two lines going in in one circuit and two lines going out in another circuit or several lines going out in another circuit. So um, these are operating a turbine of some sort. I don't know exactly what this is for. And I think this is I think this is a elect this is an electrolyzer getting hydrogen and oxygen from water and putting it through a fuel cell. This is probably a version of the solar cube. This looks like a human somehow. Um, this is the antenna for that goes on top of the solar cube that takes energy from uh, radio waves. This is. I don't know. There's the turbine again. Now here are here's sort of an abstract battery. Um, using 
using theories about valence that that were based off what I learned in class, I came I came up with a couple batteries without knowing what element I was actually talking about and where to find it. Um here's a greenhouse with the sun coming in from each angle over the course of the day. This looks like this is, looks like a battery of some sort. Here is a um, here's a a, sh a a submarine. I think it it um, goes through the water with these turbines. Yeah. I started designing cars. Here's a car. It's kind of, um, you see, I, I heard that the most stable shapes were made out of triangles. So I decked this car out completely in triangles. Not knowing that cars aren't supposed to be the most stable things. They're supposed to collapse when they hit something. So then I was drawing a Denton. And I'm uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, showing how to draw Denton, but it's it's been destroyed. These are the um Okay. I didn't crush my glasses. So these are the um these are the um spy bots again. This one this one has claws, this one has lasers. This one I think has cutters. Um, this is showing their controls most likely. Um, I gave some of them leg. I gave these two wheels and I gave this one legs. The one with clutter. And um, yeah, they're um, the wheels, particularly these are supposed to be um, sticky so they go up walls um this is um a more detailed circuitry of these robots and here are some resistors there's the um yeah and I think that's it for this. All right, see you in the future, future dad. I think yeah, that, that's it for this. Yep, yeah, that's it for this. See you in the future, future dad.